Hello fellow Unreal Engine games developers. Today, in the start of a new series, I'm going to be sharing hints and tips for using various blueprint features, starting with timers. Let's get straight into it. Today we're going to talk about timers, and although I'm in Unreal Engine 5 here, Everything I'm about to show you also applies to Unreal Engine 4. So if you're still developing on Unreal Engine 4, everything I show you is uh, is applicable as well. So let's start off by talking about uh, the basics of timers. Uh, and I'll use a couple of examples to uh, illustrate what I'm talking about here. So uh, in this level here, I have got a blueprint to spawn tables. And you can see this event here is very sort of simple spawn table event it spawns a table from the starter content at a particular location and then it adds um, some units to the location so that when we spawn the next table it, it'll be in a different location so what i want to do is i want to spawn a table every second and this is where something like a timer event comes in useful so let's zoom out a bit and go up to the event begin play which gets fired when this, uh, um, this object starts up. And what I will do is drag off here and do set timer. And I have a couple of options here, set timer by event or set timer by function name. So if I do set timer by function name, it asks me for the name of the function or event that I want to call, which if I look down here is called spawn table. So if I type in here, spawn table, and then I can specify um, how uh, often I want to execute it or how long to wait before executing it. So let's do it every second and looping. So if I, if I don't do looping, it'll just do it once after a second. If I do looping, it will do it every second. Uh, there are some other functions we'll show a bit later on in this uh, in this episode. Um, so this now will execute the spawn table function every second looping. So if I go into play mode, you can see that is spawning a table every second. Great. Now I've shown you this function first, but the split set timer by function name, but Personally, I would never use the set timer by function name. The reason being is that it's very easy to break this in your project and you've always got to think about maintainability. Because we're using hard coded uh, string here, if I later down the line change the name of this event, let's say I change it to spawn desk. If I compile, I don't get any errors, so it all looks good and I press play and nothing happens and I'm left scratching my head because there's no linkage between the timer and the event that it's calling. So my first tip for you would be avoid using the set timer by function name as it will probably cause you some headaches down the line. So what should we use instead? Let's remove this set timer by function name and instead use set timer by event. And so now we have this event handle, which we can connect to the event that we want to call. So we can drag this down to the spawn desk event. And we can set the same parameters as before, every second looping. And now if we run it, we get the same result. Difference this time is that if I come out, if I change this event name at any point, spawn table, if I then run again, nothing's broken because we've connected it by that event handle. So we've improved on the set timer by function name. However, this is still pretty ugly and pretty difficult to follow because often you do timers in your begin play event and often the events you're calling are way down in the weeds of the blueprint. So you've got this cable here to navigate. So my personal recommendation here is to do the timer in in or near the event that it's calling. I'll show you. I'll show you the 
the strategy I use um, and see if you uh, see if you agree that it's more maintainable. So I'm going to disconnect this event here. I'm going to create a bit more space in this comment and I'm going to drag down here. So now we we have the set timer by event right beside the um, event that we're calling. And what I'll now do is I'll create another custom event, which I'll call start spawning tables. So this is a, um, a, a sort of a shape that I have for anything where I have timers, where I have a start spawning tables event that sets the timer. And this is the event which happens on a regular occurrence. And now all I need to do is call this event in the begin play. So up here, I will do start spawning tables. That calls this event, which sets the timer and then the spawn table happens. But now it's much easier to see when I come back. Oh, I've got a start spawning tables event and then it sets a timer and this is what happens. So if I press play, same as before, everything runs successfully, but I've got the added benefit of maintainability in my code. So this is the this is the approach I would take for um, setting timers and keeping keeping all of the blueprint nodes together. Now, something else um, you might want to do when you're using timers is you might want to, you might not want to call an event, you might want to call a function. So over here, we've got this function, print random integer. Let me just open it up for you. And you can see that it, it prints a random string between zero and 1000. So maybe that's what I want to call in my timer every second or so. So let's go back to the event graph and look at how we might do that. Let me take out the spawn table. And again, let's do set timer by event. And we haven't got anything we can, we can connect this to. There isn't, you can't connect this to a function. So how do we do it? Well, there is this node called create event. It's quite obscure. I don't see many people using it. So if you do create event, it allows you to not only select events in the drop down, but also to select functions as well. So if I select print random integer, you can even select events. The object here is self. You can even have events or functions that are in another object, as long as you have the reference to it. So this allows you to set a timer. Now we're going to do it for every second looping again, but at this time we're using a function. So if you, if we go into play mode, you can see at the top left, every second, it's printing a random integer between zero and a thousand. Um, now let's see what happens if we change the function name, because we always want to think again about maintainability. So let's say that somebody comes along later on in the development life cycle and changes this print random integer to print random int. They, they don't know there's a timer on this. So they do this. You can see at the moment we've got this error here. When I compile, it seems to have resolved the error. So print random int is the selected um, function that ties in with this. However, when I go into play mode, it's not working. And I'm not sure if this is a bug or not. I suspect it is a bug actually, because I would have expected this to work. But what happens is if you then select print random int again from the drop down of create event and then go into play, it's working again. However, that is an issue because if you change the function name, you didn't change the create event in the timer. Again, you'd be left scratching your head wondering why something isn't working. So, um, I'd be, aware, I'd be aware of that. If you want to use a function, I would probably do something like this, where I would create a, add a custom event called print random. Then I would call the function print random int. And then I would connect that to the event. So now if I change this function name, that'll, that'll change here. If I change the event name, it'll change and nothing will break. Um, so check that out. That bug may go away in future releases, but uh, if you're using functions, it might be safer to do something like this. 
Okay, I've opened up another level now because I want to show you a couple of other parameters of the timer and what you can do with them. So in this level, you can see I've placed six of these half pipe uh, meshes in, in the, uh, they're in the blueprint. And I want to rotate them on a regular interval. So um, I, want to, I don't want to use event tick. I want to rotate them a certain number of times a second. So I'm going to use a timer to do that. So if I look at the rotator um, blueprint, you can see that I've adopted the strategy I showed you in the first level. So I've got this rotate pipe event and it adds a rotation of 10 degrees locally to my um, pipe. And then I've got a start rotating pipe event, which sets the timer to loop um, every 0.1 of a second. So effectively it will rotate this 10 degrees, 10 times a second. And then just like before in the begin play, when this um, level is, uh, is spawned, as soon as these pipes exist, it will fire this begin play event. It will start rotating the pipe and set the timer. And so the net effect of this, if I go into play mode, is that I have all six of my half pipes that are rotating 10 degrees, 10 times a second. But what if I don't want them all to rotate in synchronization? What if I want some uh, variability in when they start rotating? So I can do that with the timer event as well. So if I expand out the set timer by event, we've looked at these variables or parameters before, but there are two more parameters. One is an initial start delay and the other one is a initial start delay variance. So initial start delay just sets the delay before the first event fires. So if I do something like two seconds here and go into play, there's one, two seconds, and then it starts the timer. So that's not anything much different from putting a delay in between here and the set timer by event. What's more interesting is this initial start delay variance, which is a random figure between zero and whatever you set in here. So if I set, if I put two in here, two seconds, it means that it will start the timer anywhere between zero and two seconds. So it gives us a little bit of randomness here. So now if I go into play mode, you can see that all of those half pipes started rotating at slightly different times. And every time I run this, it'll be slightly different. So that gives me a little bit of randomness in the timer event. Now, the last thing I want to show you just to complete the um, tutorial on timers is how you can pause and unpause timers. So at the moment, once you set this timer going, it's uh, going for the duration of the game. But what we can do is we can get a we can get a handle to this timer by promoting this return value to a variable. So if we promote a variable here and we will call it a rotation timer, we can now use this later on to pause and unpause that timer. Let's create a couple of events. I'll call the first one pause rotation. And what I will do is I will take this rotation timer handle. And if I do pause, you've got the pause timer by handle and unpause timer by handle. So if I use the pause timer, in that and let's do an uh, let's do an equivalent unpause as well so another custom event which we'll call unpause rotation and again take our rotation timer and this time unpause timer by handle okay and let's just comment this a pause and unpause rotation. So now these half pipes have the ability to pause their rotation, unpause rotation. We just need to implement something to call these events. So I've put in a, a player controller on this level and you can see that I've already 
in the um, begin play of the player controller, I'm getting all of the rotators on the level and I'm adding them into an index. So I've got an array rather. So I've got an array of the rotating pipes. So let's now do a key event, uh, a bind to a key event. So let's do input key. Um, key events probably quicker. Yep. And let's see if I can find P for pause, L-M-N-O-P. Okay. So when I press the P key, I'm going to do a flip flop so I can go between paused and unpaused. So when I press it the first time, I want to get my array of rotating pipes. Do a for each loop. And then for each those rotating pipes, I want to call my pause rotation function. Connect that to the loop body. So that will go through each of the pipes on the level and pause the rotation. And then I also want to do a similar thing. I copy this with control D. Actually, that's something if you're coming from Unreal Engine 4, it used to be control W to duplicate. Now it's control D. So again, when I press it the second time, I'm going to go through the rotating pipes, but this time unpause rotation. So let's compile that, no compilation errors, and let's test that out. Okay. Everything's rotating. I'll click on the level, press P. The timer is paused. And when I press P again, it picks up the timer from where it left off. So pause and press P again, unpause. So I hope you found uh, today's tutorial useful. Um, this is a start of a new series of blueprint tips. So expect quite a few more in the coming days, weeks and months. So stay subscribed and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.